excellently here in the second half. Oh, digs away to the body again. Cortez is hurt. Hey, you are watching the entrepreneur journey, the site that's dedicated to inspiring you to step out and pursue your dreams and to make a living around that dream. This week we are in Cooparoo in Brisbane, Australia with Tyrone the Cyclone Tonga. Tyrone is the former Australian light middleweight three-time champion and so we are here at his studio where he does personal training. He's now moved into the field of business, kind of really building that business around doing what he loves. And so he's going to share some of his journey, especially navigating through that fighting and especially life after that, and especially the practical parts of building a business around doing what you love. So I'm going to throw it straight over to Tyrone and let him introduce himself and just tell us a little bit about himself personally and some more about himself professionally. Tyrone, thank you and welcome to the show. Thanks, Ty. Thanks, it's an honor to, uh, to be invited. Cheers. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. So why don't you go ahead and just tell the viewers a little bit about yourself personally and then talk us through the cycloneheadquarters.com. Uh, so, uh, yeah, my name is Tyrone Tongit. I'm, um, I'm a boxing specialist. And I'm sought after by those who want the fighter style fitness, uh, but the man, the coach, who is uh, who goes that extra mile to, uh, you know, really help them discover their potential. Hmm. Um, I'm the uh, I'm the only personal trainer in uh, in Australia, a qualified personal trainer, to uh, graduate as head of class, become a three-time uh, Australian champion, and then go ahead and coach a uh, world champion. A professional boxer. Wow. So, um, so that's my, that's that's my achievement. But I, I guess, uh, you know, me, I'm I'm a I'm a down to earth person. I'm uh, and I enjoy down to earth people. I don't have uh, much tolerance for like uh, conceited boneheads. Yeah. Um, or anything like that. I'm uh, uh, I'm more into uh, the personal development side of things. And and the reason why I started boxing uh, when I got out of high school was purely for personal development. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a huge reason why I wanted to have Tyrone on the show was the multifaceted angle that he brings into personal training. That is not only about your fitness, but this personal development that he talks about. Tyrone, the biggest portion of our audience are those that feel stuck doing what they have to do in order, instead of doing what they want to do. And so I want to highlight a couple of areas in your life, especially after high school. I know you were a talented rugby player, yep. but how did you end up transitioning from rugby into boxing? Uh, at the end of the day, it was about, um, uh, personally, rugby, rugby and rugby league wasn't giving me the, uh, the challenge that, um, that, I, that I really needed to, to be able to uh, focus myself personally. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so I remember as a kid, dabbling in and out of uh, out of boxing and yeah. thinking to myself wow this is the hardest thing I've ever done and mm. so it was a personal thing for me okay um, and uh, and yeah at the, at the end of the day it's, it's where my heart where my heart grew and where my heart was mm. uh, talk to us more about that that heart passion because obviously you had a lot of voices encouraging you perhaps to go into more conventional streams, did you have those voices, or was definitely. it definitely okay? Talk definitely. to us about that. Hundred percent. Well, I got a few contracts to, to carry on with uh, with a few clubs uh, around here in uh, in southeast Queensland and elsewhere. Yeah. And it was about um, again that stuff didn't didn't motivate me, and something was itching at my heart to be able to uh, reach for something deeper. And I found I found personally that boxing gave me that vehicle to do that. Okay. Can you give any practical tips to the viewers out there and sort of uncovering that passion in the midst of a lot of people trying to get you to go into a different direction? Yeah. Yeah, I think you've got to harness, harness your passion and build it within yourself. But you can't just sit down and think about being passionate about something. You can sure. to a certain extent, but then, uh, uh, then it dries up. I mean, uh, the passion comes from when you, when you live it and when you do it. And okay. when you take that leap, 
mm. and the passion grows on you. You don't just start out with passion, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah. You've got to do it, and then you see some some something come back to you, and then you go, oh yeah. Then you go to that next level. Yeah, it comes back to you again. It just keeps growing and growing, and that's how the that's how you become passionate about it. Mm. Um, and. Uh, that's what I've, I've discovered, me personally. Okay, so if there are viewers out there that have something that continually keeps growing and developing and they're pretty sure it is a passion, what are some practical ways to build on that even more? Uh, to build on your passion, I would say uh, practically you need, to, you need to work out how much time you can put into it and okay. how, much, uh, how much you can't. Yeah. Um, Sure. And if you're already passionate about it, you know, time, investing time into it is not a is not a big thing. But you have to be practical about what what you've got to do in your uh, in your daily life as well. Yeah. Uh, to live and, and week to week and day to day. Hmm. So um, so in so practical tip would be would be to start somewhere. That's yeah. You know, to that's just start. Great advice. Start somewhere. Yeah. To just start mm -hmm. and start, and then you'll make mistakes and and be okay with making mistakes. And then it'll 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 shove. If you're passionate and your heart's in the right place, it'll it'll show you where to go and where not to go. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean. So just to take a first step, even though you don't know you know don't know where it's going to lead or what it's going to do, and then if it's more than likely that you will have a setback, yeah. and um, and that'll teach you that to go. Well, I'm not going to go down that way. I'll go. I'll I'll attack it like this. Yeah. I'll attack it like that. Yeah. So no, that's perfect. And again, I hope viewers are encouraged by the fact that Tyrone. People from the outside, I think when they look at you, look like this is a kid that's been boxing straight out of the womb kind of thing. But I know Tyrone had a huge long history of rugby before even doing this. And that advice to step out and just do something, to see that played out in your life, leading you towards three championships is really, I guess, proof in the pudding of that advice that you've just given. And so I hope the viewers have really absorbed that and taken that on to, to step out and just to do something. Another question I really wanted to ask you for a long time is that transference from, again, skill sets from rugby to boxing there. I mean, I know you've got, got to be athletic and I think a lot of viewers feel like a lot of talent is just ingrained uh, and, and, and you can't work at it. What is your philosophy on that? Is everything you do born out of just an ingrained, this is just me or have you worked hard for it and do you feel like your skills have been learned versus ingrained? Oh, when you put thousands of hours of uh, sweat and blood into something you want to feel like you've you've earned it and that's the that's one of the biggest uh, parts of personal development is feeling like you've earned something okay. whether it's self-respect or an, or an achievement but um, uh, to come back to your point uh, man, I think it's a little bit. I think at the end of the day, it's a little bit of both. If you're that way inclined, you will feel yeah. it. You'll, you'll feel that that pushing. So when I got in, though, yeah, I quickly, I quickly learned. You know, right from the start, when I, you start getting punched in the nose, and and um, and it's starting to get to get, it's starting to hurt. And yeah. You, then you go, wow, I'm really like I've got to learn this stuff like right from the bottom. Yeah. You know? So yeah, no. From my experience, I can say definitely. Um, you know, I was always sporting inclined, but uh, but boxing is something I had to learn from the ground up. Yeah. I had to learn from the ground up. Okay. Man, can you share perhaps one of your biggest, I know you've probably got a few, but one of your greatest highlights of your career? You know what? Um, there's There's been a few great highlights and some lowlights as well. You've got to have the lowlights to, to appreciate the highlights. Uh -huh. One of the one of the things I look on most with pride is, is my... Um, when I made a decision like that, that I'm going to do this, I, I packed everything up. I had $100 in my pocket and I caught the bus uh, on a, it was almost a 20 hour trip down to Sydney. Wow. And, um, and I slept in the park for three days before I saw the guy who, who I wanted to train with. Hmm. Um, I, I, went, I went on the first day, knocked on his door, is he here? He wasn't there. I went again knocked on his door the next day he wasn't there so I didn't know anyone down there at the time of course I didn't tell my family otherwise they would have gone Ooh, what's yeah. happening what's happening yeah. so uh, when something burns in your in, in your belly and in your heart you yeah you'll be I believe for, for myself I, I was I was in good hands hmm. uh, and, and I'd find a way I'd yeah. find a way to make it work so um, so so yeah I did and then from there you know I got introduced to 
to different people and, and someone uh, someone showed me a place where I can go and get accommodation for, for very uh, very cheap in a, in a hostel but I had to go and find work and all mm. those sort of things so I went down there to learn boxing and it was almost like running away from a problem oh, wow. uh, from a personal problem okay. uh, here but and like I said the personal problem is you know the unfulfillment of not uh, of not being challenged or not feeling like you're uh, as a young kid, just straight out of high school, you, you've got all these expectations on yourself, and you, and uh, but nothing's really fulfilling to you. You want to mm. experience, you know, fulfillment. In our day and age, it's all, you know, easy come, easy go, quick, yeah. quick pleasures here and there. So, so um, that's deep, brother. And I just want to touch on a few things just in that that you've shared already. That idea of of trying to run away from that deep inner burning passion and, and you couldn't run away from it what you were running in essence was running towards the fulfillment of that correct yeah however i had to still face it before i overcome before i overcame it so whether it's here in another town or on planet mars man it's yeah. you know the same the same troubles are yeah. gonna, or the same uh, demons that you have to face uh, 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 everywhere yeah and i hope uh, the audience is really soaking that up you know you meet a lot of people and i, I think one of the greatest quotes I've come across is, is so many people die at 30, but they're not buried until they're 70. Mm. They just go through life and not really confronting that inner demon that you've so courageously stepped out to confront. And the other thing that you mentioned is again, just the extent which you pursued that passion is something that I, I hope people are really taking in as well. That. It's not just about uncovering the passion, but how much you're willing to fight for it. I mean, sleeping in a park, knocking on this guy's door, continually going back, and really, once you believed in that, you weren't giving up, were you? No, hell no. No? Hell no. Oh, that's no way. incredible. And, um, but you know, that's, that's me, and that was, I found the right decision for me to, to make mm -hmm. at, that, at that time in my life. Um, but you know, not everyone has those um, those circumstances that that allow them to do that. Where you know they might have committed family members or anything like that. I was mm -hmm. fresh out of high school yeah. and uh, and wanted to do something with my life. Yeah. So um, so I didn't have uh, you know big commitments as such. Mm -hmm. you know, being married or um, or having a mortgage, things yeah. that I have now. Yeah. You know what I mean. So yeah. you've got to you've got to be it's, it's got to be balanced and um, and I think at the end of the day, as long as it's uh, yeah, you've got, you've got to follow it somehow, but make it work somehow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Now talk to us from that moment up until three Australian championships. And, and again, I know it's difficult to pull out some huge highlights, but give us a moment where you just, you were pinching yourself and saying, is this really happening? Or, or just a proud moment for you. Can you share that? Yeah, when I, when I, when I first ran, um, coming from a footy background, we're used to um, putting on weight, putting on muscle, and um, sprinting short distances and, and things like that. But when I, when I completed my first 10K run, I thought to myself, wow, that's a, that's a great. <laughs> and I was still an amateur then before I turned pro, and I, and I, um, I thought, wow, how proud of myself I was. Uh -huh. um, you know, when I was in there, still as an amateur, and inspiring some, some of, uh, at the time, Australia, some of Australia's uh, best uh, best professional boxers, um, Danny Green, Mundine, Saiko Bika, guys who are world champions or who are, who are former world champions. Um, you know, as an amateur, just being able to hold my own and back myself against those guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even though the, even though they um, at the time were much more experienced than me, you know, it's just a sense of pride to be able to dish it out with those guys. And then as a pro. Uh, making my pro debut at uh, Sydney Football Stadium in front of um, in front of you know tens of thousands of people was uh, was surreal. Hmm. Uh, winning, um, oh, being able to travel, you know, has been uh, has been surreal. There's a lot of there's a lot of lonely times as well. You know, yeah. before you get there, there's a lot of lonely times. There's like highlights, but then it's like very lonely uh, yeah. uh, away from the spotlight, and then. All of a sudden, you're in the spotlight, then it's very lonely again, yeah. away from the spotlight. So, um, wow. Yeah, uh, thanks for sharing that. Were there any moments that, I guess, I'm um, surely you, you doubted yourself at times, and were there moments where you thought, maybe I should have just gone down the more beaten path at all rather than step out here, or did oh, you just. Definitely, definitely. You wrestle with it all the time. Huh. You wrestle with it all the time, and that's what. Uh, 
again, it's about it's about action. You ponder it, but when you when you're in in the midst of taking action with it, you haven't got too much time to to then think about things. Mm-hmm. But when you cop a setback, yeah, of course, you you, you, you sit back and you reevaluate. Is this the right is this the right thing? And um, and, and you really really never know unless you just go you just keep persevering with it hmm. no that's great advice so for anyone at this very moment listening to this very interview is hit that setback and really questioning things what short bit of advice would you say to them now I think if that's what you really want to do if that's what you really want to do and all the advice is to go in the other direction but you really want to go this direction um, then you then you're committed to it. There's mm. no there's no choice. You're you're committed to it, and you have to cop it. Yeah. You have to cop the setbacks, and 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 it's going to be more difficult, more inconvenient. You know, because the other way is more. You know, it's more straight up and down. It's convenient. You yeah. you go and uh, you go and uh, you know whether it's be to go in, to university or go and get a full time job. You know, uh-huh. I mean, those things are honourable honourable things to do. Um, but if your passion is some is somewhere else, or if your heart is somewhere else, yeah, then yeah. Um, then you, then you got to follow that. Sure. Yeah, you know what? I I got to make the point as well that your your passion might be in the in in, in the conventional path as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and if you're living be below that passion, if you know that you're just in a comfort zone, and you, but it's in the it's in the conventional path, but it's a comfort zone, mm. then. Then, then I'd encourage you to step it up and uh, another notch and, and be passionate about that as well. You know, yeah. not just not just kind of zombie on through it. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's, that's, that's great uh, Yeah, you you whatever you're doing, you know, whether it's it's cleaning the uh, the street or or uh, teaching in front of thousands of people, man, it's still yeah. it's still important. Yeah, now that seems like a real mental game changer to know that you're going to run into setbacks, but hold on to that passion and keep pushing through. Correct. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And expect them; they're gonna yeah. come. You yeah. Know? And if they don't come, then you then you're not uh, setting the bar high enough for yourself. Hmm. You know, wow, that's come. really good. Yeah. If if they don't come, you're not setting the bar high enough. That's a great line to to quote. Just make sure you refer Tyrone Tong here at the bottom of that. Talk us <laughs> through a little bit about goal setting now. Stepping out, did you have a clear picture in your mind that I want to be Australian champion, that's what you're working towards? Or was it more of a day by day? Or perhaps it was both. Talk to us about your achievements and how you made those achievements. Yeah, okay. Um, it started out with, um, uh, with I just want to be somebody within myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, then, and then it progressed to, you know what, I can really do something with this. And then I started to think of lofty heights. And then that's when that's when you you're foc- you're not focused on what's in front of you and and I took what in front of me uh, what was in front of me for granted hmm. and then you know I encountered setbacks like like losses in my career and that means losses mean things like uh, the public don't necessarily want to see you as, as much uh, or the demand to see you perform isn't isn't as much there so you know you've got public you gotta, you gotta live up to their expectations number one number two uh, you know the sponsors you know they want to they want to back winners. You know, and they will okay. withdraw on um, uh, you know sometimes when you lose. You know, or they or they lose lose faith. And so it's about quickly restoring that, getting back on the bike, and um, and and continuing, and not uh, not staying knocked down. I had to humble myself in in a lot of ways. Yeah. And I still got to rem- you know remember to to aim big, but focus on what's in front of me as well. Okay. You know? Yeah. Like you know, I can aim to be be at this level um, and I'm related now to, to business as well when I'm uh, I, I'm looking at like five years time or ten years time where you want to be but um, if I keep on if I keep on focusing on that without uh, being focused on what's also in front of me mm-hmm. then 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 I lose it okay, and, and it's yeah. the same thing I've, I've gotten to the I've gotten to the uh, in I'm talking in the business sense again I've get I've gotten to the point where you're just focusing on what's in front of you where sometimes it feels like you don't have direction now and, and you need a bigger picture hmm. as well to aim towards. So yeah, it is a it's an elusive balance, man. It's always swinging, it's never stationary, okay, you know, the yeah. target's always moving. So so, so don't be long sighted and don't be short sighted neither. Be be both in a sense. Yeah, yeah, be both. Be both and and, and swing from both um, both to both. But you You'll know something. Something will tap you on the back and, and, and let you know. Hey, man, you got to be bo- a bit more long-sighted with yeah. this. 
or he'll tap you in the back and go, hey, focus on what's in front. And that's, okay. see, that's experience as well. That's life experience. It's very hard to tell a young punk, you know, fresh out of high school that compared to you going through, you know, knock knockbacks and setbacks, you know, over, over a few years and then uh, being able to accept that that's part of life, yeah. you know, and not be so idealistic about, about how you, you know, when you first got out of high school. Mm. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, for me personally anyway. No, no, that's great advice, Tarrant. Now let's talk a little bit about your transition into the business world as an entrepreneur. What were the most dip- difficult steps there? And is there anything you'd, you would have done differently? Uh, looking back on it, uh, yeah, you know, you make some mistakes or you take the long way around. I have a habit of taking the long way around when I think I'm taking the short way, like, you know, taking the direct route. I go the long way around achieving goals. And I think that that, that means that uh, my experience is more thorough. So, um, so to answer your question, uh, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change the way I did it. Yeah. Uh, but I could have did it, you know, I could have did it faster. I could have did it um, uh, in the eyes of someone else a bit better. But now I know it more intimately and more thoroughly than anyone else because I went, you know, kind of slow and steady with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the big things that's hit on a lot in the business and entrepreneurship roles is building that audience and building your customer base. Can you give some tips on how you were able to do that at all or did you build enough of a following in your professional career to build off that? Uh, I built enough, it was, a, it was a separate identity. People wanted to see me perform in the ring but not necessarily want to be um, those same people uh, aren't on people who necessarily uh, desired to uh, take their fitness and health uh, seriously. Some of them did. Some of them. Some of them did. Okay. So it was a yeah. It was a totally different market. Yeah. To- totally different market. And, Interesting. And I'm talking about the general fan. Uh, you know, the corporate fans um, to a certain degree, yes. Uh, yeah. But some of them, some of them didn't. So uh, it, to get more or to get my customers, I'll tell you a story. Uh, when I first started, I won my first Australian championship in 2010. And okay. then I started started my business. Yeah. And uh, I would have thought that that um, uh, that recognition in the boxing ring would have transferred into into the into the uh, the business world, but it didn't. I was um, three. Oh, I would set up. So I was mobile, uh, doing fitness uh, sessions outdoors with, with different people. And there were some sessions where I'd, it'd take me an hour to travel. Uh, it'd take me half an hour to travel, half an hour to set up. So that's an hour. Then an hour to train. So okay. that's two hours, and then an, and then half an hour to set up, and a, and a half an hour to travel back. So that's that's about three hours of my time there. And I see yeah. two people rocking up for like uh, five bucks and five bucks for the session, you know. So that's ten bucks for three hours worth of work yeah. that I that I was, uh, and that's when I first started, you know. And I, and, and I quickly had to learn that hey, there's a business element. Not just I knew what I knew technically was was really good, but yeah. then now I had to focus on the uh, the business element as well. Yeah. And so there was, um, I think my break was, I, I, I got a break uh, with, um, I did some free sessions for, for some corporate guys over in a, at a new gym. The, one of the owners said, hey, mm-hmm. man, can you, um, can you uh, take this session? I need, I need a favor. If you can do, take these guys for six weeks, um, then, uh, you know, then I, after that, I can, uh, you know, they're your customers if, mm. if, if you choose to. So I had to take a, a gamble going. Okay, do I work for free for six weeks with these guys okay. in order to in order for the possibility, um, no risk. So, so I, I was training them for six weeks um, for that block, uh, whilst I was doing some other jobs with, um, with with different people or some other training with different people. And yeah. Um, and yeah, it worked out. I got a referral to um, uh, that actual group was a was a great group of guys. Um, each one of them were all business owners in their in their um, in their fields. Uh, there was a couple of lawyers there. Um, a couple in the mining industry and a, uh, a couple of engineers. So uh, one of them referred me to a, um, uh, to a great guy who I'm still in, in, in touch with. I'm still in touch with most of those guys actually. But, uh, and, and I found that, or he, he asked me to come in and work with his corporate team. And so I found that uh, working, through, working with those guys, that while I was getting, you know, traveling several hours, and, uh, and working with everyday people to uh, to train for you know ten dollars an hour, uh, there were corporate teams that were willing to pay me a lot of money mm. um, to 
to go and train them and value value the training. So, so I've quickly figured out who uh, who I most enjoyed working with, and yeah. um, who could afford my services. Yeah. And so I started off again, you know, working at uh, ten bucks for three hours. Right up to now, um, I charge out at three hundred and thirty dollars for one hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, you're worth every. <laughs> every dollar of that i've seen some of the training that you've done i think it's phenomenal but touch on that again being selective with with i guess your your target audience you'd mentioned that you're working with people you enjoy working with that's a theme that's come up before in in the business world that there should be an element of selectiveness in who you choose to work with can you just talk about if that's played out in your life at all or have you just opened up your services or do you focus more on the corporate world? When I first started, I had my services open and I still um, volunteer today uh, you know, from time to time for Vision Australia, for mm-hmm. example, and done some charity work in the past. Uh, but that's it. I think as a small, as a small operation, um, and I'm talking small as in, you know, I'm the, um, I'm the only employee mm-hmm. and on the, um, on the front end and the back end, I do all of that sort of stuff. Um, along with my, my wife does a lot of my admin work as well, but uh, it's largely largely rests on me. So in having in saying that, uh, because I'm small compared to a big business, yeah. um, then definitely you have to be a, um, you have to target your, your selected market. Yeah. Um, I absolutely. think if you're a big, you're a big company and you've got, uh, and you've, and you've got budgets of, uh, you know, millions of dollars, then you can afford to cater to, to everyone, to the masses and make very small uh, margins but still do very well out of that yeah no, that's really good advice all right now what about um, just practical steps for viewers who are really thinking about getting into this fitness area and starting a personal fitness business uh, what would you have to advise them on you gotta love people man number one you gotta love you gotta love people you gotta you gotta live what you preach number one so you gotta be a, a picture of um, of health, they want to aspire to be something better, and they then they're gonna gonna look at you and and, and so you got to take care of yourself. Number one, number two is you got to be a good. Uh, you've got to you've got to like people. You don't necessarily have to be a great talker, but you just need to be good with people. You need to show some care for them. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's good. And then number three, I mean, I think the technical stuff really is is good to know, uh, but un. The, the best thing I can say as a, as a trainer that you need is uh, the ability to empower or, or invoke self-belief in the people that you train. They need to believe that, hey man, I'm, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. You know, and you need to go, th- go through that with them. Uh-huh. So, so those are the mo- that's the foundation. And then you've, got to, um, you've almost got to take a call. You've got to re-educate yourself um, as a business owner as well. And that's, yeah. a, separate, that's a, like a separate part of you. Okay. So there's a, there's a part of you who's a technically good and you're passionate about what you do. And then, man, you've got to get some business skills as well. You've got to know how to you know, keep records. You've got to know how to, um, you got to, know how to sell. You've got to yeah. know the, the selling process, your marketing funnels, um, your, uh, you know, your follow-ups and all that sort of thing. You've got to have systems in place. Yeah. And that's, that's, very, um, that's very crucial. If you want to stay passionate about your work, You've got to have enough time to invest in that, in, in systemizing what what you do, so that um, uh, so that it doesn't doesn't bog you down, doesn't okay. bog you down. That's good. Did you learn those skills yourself as well? I had to. It was okay. it was sink, sink or swim. Wow. You know, if I was to survive now, you know, about nine out of ten personal trainers uh, are out of the industry within the first two years. Yeah. Uh, it's been over four years now, coming up to five years uh, for me, and um, and I work with some very interesting people. Um, people who who are highly driven and who help me be be driven myself I've always been naturally driven but um, but I work with other people who are like that and I've been fortunate enough to um, you know to to buy my house with my wife and um, uh, all from my all from my business mm-hmm. well that's great can you share with the viewers any perhaps personal habits that have really transferred across all areas of your life that have been very helpful uh, I think, yeah, to enjoy what you do, have a laugh. Don't take it too serious. Like, take it seriously, but not too seriously. Yeah. Uh, have a laugh. People got to see that. Uh, um, that yeah, that, that you, at the end of the day, you, you enjoy yourself as well as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the habits that have that, that have uh, taken me well is my ability to, I guess, uh, see. Uh, 
uh, see both ends of a story, you know, not just kind of side with one too, uh, too quickly, be a bit, you know, see that there's more to the story than meets the eye okay. kind of thing. So if someone's acting, acting rude or someone's acting nice, you know, there's sometimes, uh, there's, there's sometimes more to the story. Uh, so what, ha what personal characteristics have, um, have helped me? I would say my ability to, um, to just be, be driven and be inquisitive about things. Hmm. I think uh, uh, my creative side, always wanting to, to, to solve problems, yeah. um, that's, that's helped me. Uh, these are things that, that have also worked against me as well, you know, okay. if, if, I don't, if I don't have it balanced. Uh, for example, I, heard, I, heard, I had to learn to be organized, you know, I had to learn to, be, uh, to, to manage things, to manage my time, manage my, my records and, and be disciplined in, in other areas that I didn't, didn't find necessarily, um, you know, or, or feel good about doing. Um, things like, I mean, I, I, I really find it boring to sit down and do data entry, mm. you know, and I have to do it every day because I have to record, I have to show the people that, I, that I'm recording everything that they do, that we're working towards, you know, bigger goals, that, yeah. it's physical, that it's physical and, you know, intangible as well. So, but that sort of stuff uh, inherently doesn't, doesn't interest um, or I find boring because it's monotonous yeah. and it's long and it's not like kind of, you know, fun. Yeah. Whereas I'm, uh, when I interact with people, you know, like this, and I play with their energy. That's fun to me. That's that's what I love love doing. You know, yeah. you know what I mean. So, yeah, sure. so it's uh, you have to be, yeah, you have to be well well rounded, I guess. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that, Tyrone. You really do have an incredible story and an incredible journey from really post high school to stepping out, going to Sydney with that burning inner passion, banking on that, and three light middleweight Australian championships. And I, I know the viewers are going to be incredibly encouraged to really find that inner passion, bank on it, pursue it, and push through setbacks. But as we close now, I want to just finish off with three questions that I ask everyone I sit down with. Sure. And the first question is, who is the greatest influence in your life? Uh, uh, that's probably changed over time. You know, when I was younger, obviously it was my parents um, mm -hmm. and uh, and some close family. And uh, now, still, you know, I'm close with my family. But I think, you know, my family now has become my wife. So she's um, uh, she's been one of the biggest influences, or I should say, one of the biggest um, uh, biggest factors in in my life. Now, now I care about someone else, not just me. You yeah. know what I mean? So. Uh, and that's been uh, that's been a great um, a great process. Uh, marriage is one of the greatest ways to, to personally develop. Let me tell you, man. You know, you know, it's it's not just you anymore. It's it's another person. So, yeah. so yeah, hundred percent. I would say I, w I would say my wife number one. Uh, in terms of uh, sporting, uh, you know, I look up to guys like uh, Costa Zou or um, uh, the achievements of Muhammad Ali. Um, anyone really that's uh, that's really giving it a go. Um, I mean, these days, man, there's there's so many people getting labeled as cheats now with all the the drugs and performance enhancing things that, that go around. But um, and and you just don't know. Like before before I found out, I really I really did um, respect Lance Armstrong, for example. You know, and it's and you know it's funny it's funny how you know something like that can really change your perceptions. In the yeah. business world, I would say. Uh, I would say for their business achievements, um, I respect guys like Steve Jobs, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Branson, um, you know, and even um, even entrepreneurs that are, that have on the come up, come through. Uh, uh, the guy who who uh, I saw him on the Shark Tank actually. He's uh, his name was um, uh, he started Fubu. He started Fubu. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. And Damon 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 John I think it. I think his name yeah it sounds familiar yeah so um and just hearing his story you know and and and, and how he came up with urban streetwear hmm. just coming up so just i'm interested in people's stories as well man um yeah anyone anyone in business who has who has learned and has something to to give the world you know i'm, I'm, I'm interested yeah in that. well you've you've made huge accomplishments in the business part of your life tyrone and i know you're going to inspire a lot more people Next question is, what do you want to be remembered for in this life? Oh, wow, that's deep, man. 
That's <laughs> neat. Uh, okay, in this life. Well, I can only speak for now. I'm, I'm, you know, 2014, we're talking about 2014. Sure. You ask me in 10 years, man, I might give you a, a different answer. Yeah, we'll go with today. We'll, so we'll go, we'll have to. Yeah. So um, today, what would I, I like to go down as? I would go, like to go down as uh, someone that made people, that, that, uh, that made the world feel better. Beautiful, perfect. Yeah. We can leave it at damn. That's okay. That's great. Yeah. Cool. Unless you want to elaborate on that, I think that's wonderful. No, man. I just want to make people feel better. Feel better. Mm. Feel better than oh, at the top of their game. Yeah. Sure. You know, he came to the world, and he made you know people just feel better. Thank you. Last question. What is your definition of success? My personal definition of success. My personal definition of success is uh, my personal definition of success. Hmm, man, you got me. <laughs> you got you got me. I, I can tell you the business side of it just like that. But personally, I think uh, as long as I always feel like I'm evolving, I'm always feeling like I'm growing as a as a person. Yeah. That's my personal uh, personal definition for success. No. I think the, the short. That's a short version. Yeah. I'm trying to think of it. Okay, how can I tell tell him in like, you know, in less than <laughs> ten seconds? There, there it is. No, that's um, good. Growth and evolving. I love yeah, it. Yeah. If I feel like I'm uh, I'm growing, like whether it be a new skill or whether I'm learning something new about a, a different person or someone else's story, or a um, or a new technique or I've, or I've achieved a different level of fitness, you know, all those things. If I'm growing personally, then um, uh, then yeah, I feel like that to me is success. That to me is success. Great, thank you. Now Tyron, can you share with the viewers ways to connect with you? So just tell us a little bit about cyclineheadquarters.com. We're going to have links to the sites on the show notes. But talk to us a little bit about how people can connect with you in the best way they can. Yep, uh, look up cyclinehq.com, one word, C-Y-C-L-O-N-E-H-Q. Perfect. Dot com. And, um, and yeah, all my contact details are on there. Yeah, and we'll, we'll have links to some of Tyrone's highlights, some of his championships and some of his, his great knockouts are also online and so we'll point you towards that. I know we do have viewers from the States and from South Africa and it's a growing audience and so if anyone wants to fly Tyrone overseas to train you, I'm sure once you watch these videos you'll be very interested in doing so. But again Tyrone, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule just to spend with the Entrepreneur Journey community and inspiring us and really inspiring people to pursue that passion. But as we wrap up, are there any final words you'd like to say to the viewers? Uh, yeah, keep in touch with, with Ty, man. He's going on his own journey. Um, I wish you all the best in your journeys and um, hope to hope to see, uh, see you guys on, on camera at some stage talking about your success as well at, at some stage in the future. Perfect. Tyrone the Cyclone Tonga, thank you so much for your cool, time, man. man. Cheers. I appreciate it. Thanks, brother. Oh, 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 oh,